All right, welcome to episode number one of the Open to Work podcast. Very exciting. So today I am joined by Darren Ryan, and we found each other on LinkedIn. Darren, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. To start off, as I always like to do, who is Darren Ryan? <laughs> I am just a man sitting talking with another man. Uh, no, I, to give you the, the, the sort of professional picture, I am essentially an executive creative director, um, brand strategist. There's a number of sort of titles that sort of fit. Uh, I've got such a, an incredible uh, set of experiences that mm -hmm. um, there's a number of titles and descriptions that can, can apply. Um, but generally I am uh, someone who is obsessed with, with, you know, leading creatives and, you know, empowering design teams and creative teams and copywriters and uh, you, know, you name the, the creative discipline. And I am all about uh, empowering those people to produce amazing work and just be amazing individuals. Nice. So, and you mentioned in that executive creative director, and maybe this is a lack of research on my part. Um, and also for you and for everyone watching, if I look down, I'm taking notes. If I look over there, I'm looking at my notes on the computer. And if I look over there, I'm looking at his LinkedIn profile. Um, but you mentioned executive creative director. Yeah. I've never thought about it in, until you just said it really. So how would you define, I don't know what an executive creative director necessarily does. And maybe it's different depending on where they are. So what has been your experience? Yeah, and I, I think it is different depending on where you're at, uh, depending on, you know, the companies will call it various things, um, but it is uh, a level of sort of creative leadership uh, that is focused on, so for instance, if it's in-house, uh, you know, a position like this would be uh, focused on building and uh empowering the in-house creative team uh, to deliver on the objectives um, internally. This is usually a, a, uh, an executive level position. There are times when it is a director level position depending on the size of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does vary, uh, but it, the, the primary objective of any kind of creative direction is to uh, walk creative projects all the way through from beginning to end Mm -hmm. and, and really sort of bring uh, the orchestra together to play this incredible music that is uh, what we deliver to the client, whether it's an external client or an internal yeah. client. Uh, but it really is about bringing all of the parts together uh, and it, making the work sing. I like it. Might be because I like music so much. So it does seem in, in looking at your profile and reading some different things about you um, that your experience in marketing and design goes back, you know, for most of at least your professional career, if not before that. So your enjoyment, your passion in this design and creative and marketing field, when and where did that begin? Oh, that happened a long time ago. Um, and it really started when I took a, a job, uh, I was still in school, took a job and they had no one to support them other than uh, me. So I had to create, I had to uh, figure out how to market and, and mm -hmm. create messaging around, you know, the, the, the business itself. I realized I was really into being able to tell a story, both visually and, you know, with, you know, these amazing words and, you know, marrying them together and, and sort of bringing somebody to an understanding of what I was trying to tell them or what I was trying to share with them, whether it's a business or a service or a product. And I thought that was such an amazing, uh, amazing approach to, you know, life, right? I could easily uh, spend all day long designing and designing uh, anything and everything I could, I could get my hands on. Yeah. Uh, but when you 
do it for the first time and you realize that, hey, I could be really good at this and I can really uh, see how this can unfold in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, it really does you know, get you excited. I, I always tell everyone that there are certain periods in my career that uh, I get this, this feeling, sometimes it, it, it might be an ulcer, I don't know, but <laughs> a feeling in, deep in my gut that, that I just want to wake up and I just want to get to work and I just want to uh, tackle this project yeah. or solve this problem, uh, all from a creative point of view. But it's, it's just such an amazing feeling when you do something that you absolutely love. Yeah. And when, when that feeling comes up in the morning and, and you want to jump out of bed and, and get to work, uh, it's really something to experience. And I've been so blessed to experience that. That's amazing. So with, with that position so long ago where you were able to begin that process and realize how much you enjoyed that, was that what you were hired there to do? No. Okay. <laughs> I figured not because you said no, you, know, you didn't have somebody to do it. It was a small business in a small town and you know, it, was, it was just one of those, hey, you have to wear every hat and you've got to be able to do whatever it takes to, you know, open the doors. Absolutely. And, and yeah, that's, that's something that, that a small business can really give you these amazing experiences and learnings that you can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so small businesses are just amazing especially for someone who wants to pursue a, a creative profession. Yes, very much so. And, you know, speaking of, of small businesses also, again, in looking through your profile, your resume, researching online, you, you have experience in not just small businesses, but startups, mid-sized businesses, fortune 100 companies, you know, a, a very wide range fantastic range of companies you've worked with and worked for do you have a preference of one or the other or you know what are your thoughts there um i think uh all of them have their pros and and they all have cons too right mm -hmm. um a, a very large company you don't get to know everyone uh, as personally as you'd like to uh very small company you know everyone too well sometimes yep. um so it it, it varies it, there is, uh, when, when I worked for a startup, mm -hmm. I learned to really understand the elements of a business, uh, much more so than, than the business I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, working for a startup, you really have to uh, partner with legal and you have to partner with IT and you have to partner with every aspect and every facet of the business and really understand it because um, in a large organization, sometimes marketing or creative doesn't always get along with legal. Um, they don't always understand why legal is asking them to do this or that. Yep. Uh, having that experience within a startup really gives you a strong understanding of why there are legal aspects to uh, a design or copywriting, uh, what, how it impacts you know, the brand as a whole, how it impacts the business, yeah. how it puts a business at risk if, if you're not protecting the, the work or uh, making sure you're not, you know, uh, violating someone else's work. Uh, because it's, yes. it's sometimes easy to do that too. You, you go off on a tangent and, and you think, hey, this is this fantastic idea. And when you dig in and do a little research, you know, legal's there to, to help you with that. And when you can look at someone like that as a partner and you're in a large multinational company, it really does go a long way to creating, you know, really strong relationships with these departments that a lot of creatives don't necessarily um, yeah. have a full understanding of. Absolutely. <clears throat> so you use the word brand, mm -hmm. which I think is a fascinating word. It is. So Darren, how would you define the word brand <laughs> oh wow um the simplified version of a brand is <laughs> hey it's a product it's a service it's a combination of all of those things mm -hmm. uh, brand is so much more than just what 
what a lot of people think as as a product or a logo. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of people who think, "Hey, my logo is my brand," yeah. and it's it's not right. Uh, I think there are many people out there that that realize that a brand is so much more than a logo, right? Understanding, you know, the the, the brand's mission and vision, and yes. really understanding the personality of the brand and how you how the, the, the voice and tone is set and the messaging um, is, is uh, created. It, it's, it's every aspect of a business or uh, every aspect of, uh, the easiest way to say that is every aspect of a brand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, yes. it's essentially, you know, like the Coca-Cola company, the Coca-Cola company is its own brand, but mm -hmm. then it has many different sub-brands and Coca-Cola is the yeah. most famous. You know, Home Depot has this amazing brand, uh, but it also carries many different brands that aren't anywhere close to the um, the level or the elite uh, level of Home Depot's brand as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, there's there's a lot of different um, interpretations of brand, but it really Very is, is so. every every thread to everything that your employees do and. Absolutely. I could just go on and on for, for yeah, forever. And you could. I, I love the thread and I love it is is absolutely everything within it. And speaking of, everyone please know, speaking of of brand and Darren as a brand. So I, I spoke with Darren earlier this week. Mm -hmm. Um I should have told you it is Thursday, February 4th, 2021. So there you go. We're dating the video. But when I talked to Darren, um Everything you see in the background behind Darren, the shelves, the books, the everything, that wasn't for this recording. That's how it was. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> I think it, I think it's fantastic. Love it. And I think it, you know, I think that's part of defining a brand. I mean, that's, that's who sure. you are in that room. So earlier you mentioned um, telling a story, mm -hmm. which is, is a fascinating skill that I don't, I don't have. But speaking of story, what is your favorite moment? Ah, great question. Thank um, you. I like to, I like to dig into moments. Um, the Coca Cola Company was all about moments. That was, you know, a big thing there. Yeah. Um, it, I've been really blessed to enjoy many fantastic moments. Hmm. There have been some that are so. Uh, many people would probably look at and say, you think that's a great moment? Um, but, you know, to me, these great moments are these instances where you learn a lesson, where you, you know, something great happens and so on and so forth. Um, I'll give you some examples. The, I think the, the biggest, greatest moment uh, from a professional point of view um, mm -hmm. was uh, I worked for the Coca-Cola company and you know we were rebuilding the internal agency and rebranding it coca-cola studios and really trying to win over these internal constituents and, and stakeholders and really sort of tell a story of you know how we've created this great environment and how we have um you know hired these amazing talents and put together great workflows and processes so that we can deliver this amazing product. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a process. And there was actually, you know, I kept saying to, to the team, there's gonna be a day when we turn around and look at where we've been and say, hey, we did it. Yeah. We got there. Uh, we may not, we don't necessarily know when that's gonna be, but we'll have an idea that when we look back, you know, how mm -hmm. successful we've been. Part of what we were focused on, it was also building out space, physical space, which was okay. unique to, um, you know, my career. It was a once in a lifetime experience for me. It was building so out a, a space. space as in, in the Coca-Cola studios, physical space for the studios. Yeah. Okay. okay. Physical space, um, you know, video production, creative areas, innovation, so on and so forth. So really sort of building out these spaces. And it was a long process because it was, you know, Coca-Cola was going, undergoing this huge renovation. So it wasn't a quick process. Yeah. Uh, but there was a moment in time right 
before we opened the doors to the physical space where we all sort of looked back and said, hey, <laughs> remember when we talked about the, that we were gonna you know, know when we, we made it to a certain milestone uh, without you know, really knowing? Yeah. That was that sort of moment. And to see everyone's hard work and everyone's talent come to uh, being brought to the table and really being celebrated was just such an amazing moment for me. So it was physical space. We were renewing a brand. We were, you know, yeah, really sort of setting ourselves on a new path. Mm -hmm. And that moment was just exceptional from a professional point of view. You know, and certainly many personal, you know, meeting my spouse many, many years yeah. ago, you know, so on and so forth. I could go on and on about moments, um, but there's really, I've been so blessed to have so many great moments. Yeah, I think it's fantastic because, I mean, one, that, that moment in, included other people and a team, and but yeah. not just that. And I, maybe everyone forgets sometimes, but reaching that moment and actually being able to stop and recognize it. Yeah. Because uh, I think I've gone past those moments before and didn't stop to realize it. And just kind of went right past it. So I, th I think it's fantastic that you even took the time to stop, realize what was going on and reflect on it. Um, yeah. And, and you yeah. don't always know. No. You don't always know mm -hmm. in the moment. Sometimes you have to, to go beyond it to, to see it. Mm -hmm. Love that. So <clears throat> you used the word personal. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. Uh-oh. <laughs> not in a bad way. I don't think, no, I'm just curious. So outside of work, what are some, some hobbies, things you enjoy doing, whatever, whatever you want to share? Oh, well, I, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> I think my pride and joy outside of work are my rescues. I've got, um, a couple oh. of beautiful rescue beagles. Um, one nice. that is my, my baby boy is 17 years old now. Wow. And um, he is happy-go-lucky. He was abused and beat up when we first saw him. Uh, it was amazing. It was a New Year's Eve uh, back in 2006, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he was so scared and in the back of the cage, um, this crate in an open air mall, they were yeah. trying to find foster homes because a number of these dogs were rescued from an abuser and then they were rescued from the rescue shelter that was shut down the next day because they had too many animals. Yeah. So they had brought them up to Atlanta and they were desperately trying to find people to take them home for the night because they mm -hmm. didn't have anywhere for these animals to go. And of course we absolutely will take, we'll take him home. Yeah. The little guy was just petrified. It took for you know, many, many weeks for him to come out of his shell, but he is just the sweetest dog in the world. And it reminds me every day, every time I look at him, how you can get through anything. If you can get through something like that and for him to wag his tail and just be so happy and content, yeah. um, you could just get through anything. So it's been a, an amazing um, lifetime with him. So uh, my beagles are, are my pride and joy. That's and I have awesome. a little baby cat rescue as well. Nice. <laughs> we did. This one isn't about me, but I'll say, so we did. We did. We find a little, I think the kitten was only two or three weeks old and we just in the middle of the highway. Well, highway, it was a little two lane highway, but yeah, we stopped, picked her up, brought her home. She's upstairs, but uh, yeah, it, that, that's amazing. So jumping back into professional. And if you listen, if, if you all listened to the little intro video into why this podcast exists in the first place, then you'll have a little insight of why Darren and I are speaking, but of course on LinkedIn right now, you've got the hashtag open to work on your, on your picture. Yep. So in, in your journey so far, and if I remember correctly, um, I think it was what mid 2020, um, uh, which a, a lot of people were going through in your search for a position, are there barriers you're hitting things you're walls you're just knocking up against i mean how's the journey going the journey's been interesting yeah 
uh, I think we've all gone through whether we've been displaced or whether we've you know stayed working. Um, I think we've all gone through sort of this transition to a new us. I think there's very, very few people so. who are the same as they were at the beginning of 2020. Absolutely. So I think uh, the journey has been interesting. I think um, the way I approached it was helpful from a um, just a, a sort of preparation point of view and from a, a timing point of view. It's it's really been about you know talking to a lot of great people, building some new relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm in um, the Tampa market right now, and still fairly new. You know, it's been about you know, two years. So there's a lot of people I haven't met yet, a lot of people I don't know yet. Um, and I've really gotten to, to, to have great conversations with some of these folks that I probably wouldn't have had the time to yeah. um, in a normal situation. I've also, you know, you really have, you know, this sort of reflection period where you, you, you dig in deep and you figure, hey, there's a lot of things I still need to learn and I want to learn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do you go about doing that? Where do you start and, and how do you prioritize what you want to learn? Yeah. You've got a little bit of time. So how do you do that? And, um, you know, I took a couple certificate classes and, you know, I, I did a lot of, of you know, self-guided learning and yeah. a lot of, like I said, much more deeper conversations than, mm -hmm. you know, your typical introduction conversation, uh, really digging into creative process and, and, you know, other you know, colleagues or, or potential colleagues, you know, how they view the creative process and how they, you know, what drives them from a creative point of view and really understanding, you know, that there's a lot of different points of view out there from a creative yeah. aspect. Yeah. And having all of that is just this amazing way of getting to a, a great product. Uh, so being able to, to have those conversations has been fantastic. When it comes to looking for the types of roles that I'm looking for, mm -hmm. um, it, there's not very many openings in a company, right? So from an in-house perspective, there's usually one, maybe two or three, depending on the size of the company. Speaking uh, specifically but, of like marketing or creative services and things like that, or just exactly, overall? Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, so, you know, you've, you've got that uh, point of view. And then you've also got, you know, there's a lot of people who are, struggling and they're trying to figure out, hey, we've got a bunch of, of open hires or open positions, uh, but we're a little fra afraid to hire in for, you know, these, these you know, larger, uh, more executive focused positions. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and obviously it takes a little bit longer as well. Absolutely. But um, I'm noticing, you know, since the beginning of the year, there's been a lot more, um, you know, positivity around these opening positions and you know, I'm seeing a lot more uh, folks who have been discouraged in going through their journey um, are finding a lot of positivity now, which is yeah. fantastic. Good. Because you do get a point where you, you're like, ah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a little rough. Yep. But then you, you, you pull yourself back or, or you rely on your support network to pull yourself back up. And um, I've got one, one friend who is, had a really rough go, and I'm just happy to see that he is uh, moving along in the right direction now. So I, I, I see a lot of positive in front of us. I think 2021 is gonna be an epic year in a very different way than 2020 was epic. I hope, I, yeah, <laughs> we all hope so, yes. Let's hope. <laughs> it's funny because I actually, at the beginning of each year, I try to, to, to figure out what the theme for the year is gonna be. Yes. And for 2020, my theme was epic. My theme was well, gonna be epic. <laughs> You weren't incorrect. <laughs> and it was, it was absolutely on the, the nose. However, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think absolutely. any of us were. Yep. So theme for the year. So it begs a couple of questions. We know the theme for 2020 was epic. Mm -hmm. And what about, what was the theme for 2019? And do you have a theme for 2021? 2019 was purpose. I mean, yeah, yeah 2019 nice. was purpose. Okay. And it was, um, I had made a transition in my career 
and um, I had multiple clients and I was, you know, focused on, I really wanted to learn each of their core purpose, what they were bringing so that I understood, you know, how to, you know, move them forward. Purpose isn't always evident. It's not always clear. Yeah. So, you know, really trying to dig deep and, and know what is uh, purposeful to you and what is perf- purposeful to the client um, is really, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. It, yeah. it, it takes an effort. So that was, that was where I was in 19. 20 was epic. And 2021 is epic part two. <laughs> that, makes, I, that makes perfect sense. Okay. I, because there's, there's a lot of things that um, I was really, you know, in a normal world, we would have accomplished some amazing stuff. Yes. I think now we have a very different view of the world. So mm-hmm. epic means something very different. To me, epic was big projects and, and you know, big gestures mm-hmm. and big live every day as, as, as big as I could. Mm-hmm. And it was going smooth until we all know. However, yep. when 2020 or 2021 hit, um, I realized it isn't necessarily about the big gesture and the big project. It's about the big idea and it's about the big relationship. You know, it's about, you know, how do I take relationships to a new level? How do I build new relationships and then take them to the new level? Yep. Uh, because it's all, everything I do is, is about relationships. Yeah. So, uh, but it's, 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 it's more about the idea. It's not the gesture. It's the actual hands-on getting it done idea. So speaking of, of that kind of, of idea, is there one skill set that wherever your journey in career or honestly, personally takes you, you want to ensure is utilized? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so yes, (laughs) I'd like to say all of them, uh, (laughs) but that's impossible, right? Uh, I don't know. I came up through design. So design is always, you know, at the core of, of my passion, Mm -hmm. um, as you, as you sort of transition from that hands-on designer to that creative leader or creative manager, um, you know, you really have to start making decisions, you know, how hands-on do you want to be? How hands off can you be? So there's, there's a lot of transition as you're, you're going from, you know, a designer being a designer and becoming a creative leader, whether it's an art director or creative director, Mm -hmm. whatever the position is, whatever the title is, there's so many different titles. Um, But as that leader, you've got to sort of think that through. So I think from from my design days, I think the thread of understanding design at its core and being able to guide someone to create something spectacular, obviously is at the core of a creative direction type of a position. Uh, but when it comes to uh, that people building, that empowering, it's really something that has taken me a long time to really, I don't want to say perfect because nothing's ever perfect, sure. but it's really taken me a, a good chunk of my career to uh, ensure that I'm empowering people in the right way. So I think the skill that I would, take from the design aspect of my career is really being able to guide someone in that design and empower them to get better and be better than I was and, you know, be stronger and, you know, keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. From my leadership, there's, you know, people leadership is, is, is really critical for me. Um, Making sure that, you know, uh, no matter what role I am able to build or rebuild. Uh, I think that is a skill set that has been one thread through every position I've, I've, um, I've enjoyed in my career. Um, some teams I've had to build from scratch. Yeah. Some I've had to build, uh, rebuild and sort of reposition. Uh, some I've inherited and had to sort of 
rethink the types of services we offer or the types of skills we needed. So that rebuilding and refocusing mm -hmm. is a skill that I have uh, really enjoyed and really I've, I've been able to create success for not just for me, but for yeah. many other people through being able to build or rebuild. Yeah, of course. And I read, I wrote down the word thread. I didn't realize I liked that word, but I do. And I wrote it down. Um, nice. And then I wrote core above it. So the core thread that runs through it all, but I, I really, really like it for you in your search, because of course, well, maybe not, but a lot of times the way I look at it is, you know, we're out searching for a job, you know, we want to make sure, you know, we're, we're reflecting not just what we're actually good at, but what the company is looking for, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's equally important to realize that we need to look at the companies that we're applying for and yes. is that what we want so is what are some things you're on the lookout for when you're searching for companies to apply at oh that's a good question uh what does leadership look like uh working for somebody uh, for me i've got to be able to believe in that person mm -hmm. Um, or those people, depending on the situation, yep. uh, believe in what the business is focused on and what the mission of the business is. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not easy to enjoy what you do if you don't believe in who you're doing it for. And Absolutely. I will tell you, I had... Yeah. I had many fantastic bosses in my career, uh, but I've had two super exceptional bosses. I had one uh, who was just such an amazing person at his core. Uh, he was just genuine and, and really cared about everything around him. And it's really hard not to believe in someone like that. Yep. And when they're so giving and sharing and, you know, they want to see everyone, you know, that they're, that's working for them succeed. Yep. Uh, and I, I have to say, I've really tried to model my leadership after him. I've never been able to live up to him. Mm -hmm. um, we won't name names just in case. <laughs> uh, I don't want to give him a big hit, but um, you know, I still try really hard to be, as um, take all of his his good points and, and bring them into my day to day. Yeah. Um, and you know, I had another uh, boss who she was uh, one of the most thoughtful people and one of the most business savvy people I had come across. Really didn't understand what I did, but yeah. knew she needed someone like me. Yeah. And the partnership there was just amazing. And and that's another person mm -hmm. that I've taken so many aspects of, of what I try to do and model it after what she gave me and what she gave to the rest of the teams yeah. that she led. So to me, you know, these companies, as long as the, 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 the mission is there, it's also about the people. It's not just the brand when uh, the, let me rephrase that. It's not just the, uh, the company, it's every aspect of the brand, the people, mm -hmm. the messaging, you know, the, the day to day, the culture, the, there's yeah. so many aspects of that, but at the, at the center of all of that is people. Absolutely. I do want to bring up, because mm -hmm. you said you, you've had, of course, numerous, just, you know, really, really great people you've worked for, but mm -hmm. two that stand out are, and are exceptional. I just want you to know that, 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 that's, that's more, that's more than, than a lot of people. So that's fantastic. And it's, it's so important to have almost that mentor relationship of, of something you're driving toward. Yeah. It's, it's not easy to find. Yeah. I've, like I said, I've been, I've been blessed. Some of these experiences and some of these people have just been so amazing 
that mm. you know I've been able to to um, glean as much as I can and learn as much as I can from them. Uh, but you're right. There's a lot of people out there who don't have, that aren't, uh, as lucky yeah. to have, Absolutely. you know, great leadership. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, I've been blessed. Definitely. So in your reflecting or in your planning, because as we've learned, you have a word for each year. <laughs> yes. So now I'm wondering what about, you know, not just projecting out one year, but three years down the road, five years down the road, do you, and I think it's been difficult for all of us to have this type of thing during 2020 and coming into 2021, but do you, do you have this three year or five year vision of what Darren does or looks like, or what, you know, is there a vision in there? Yeah. So um, I'm not a hopper, right? I'm not someone who is looking to get a quick fix on one role or one title gotcha. or this or that. Yep. I'm looking for long term, right? So uh, I've always been focused on uh, the more you can learn, the, the more intimate you could be with the brand, the better you can serve mm -hmm. it. And so for me, you know, three years down the line, I am you know, leading this incredible charge for uh, whether it's one brand or, or multiples or uh, whatnot. It's, it, it's, it's a brand with a purpose. It's a team with a purpose. And mm -hmm. we are focused on uh, driving success. That is, that is the main goal. Five years from, from now, it's, it's elevating that entire team, building out whatever, you know, that, that, whatever that brand needs. There's, yeah. there's, there's so many variables. So when you, when you say, Hey, in Absolutely. three years, I'm going to be this. And, you know, just like 2020 epic, yep. <laughs> right? it yep. didn't work out quite that way, or at least the, my interpretation, Not the correct of definition of it. Yes. Right. Um, three years from now, it is, you know, it's, it's a very uh, different world. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, how branding is going to change, how marketing is going to change. Yep. Uh, there's so many trends that are coming up uh, to our, our, our heels right now that could change and, and offer completely different directions. Uh, but at my core, I know in three years, it's about leading teams. And in five years, it's about, you know, leading teams uh, throughout, uh, you know, whether it's a, a large company or whether it was a small company a year mm -hmm. from now and a large company five years from now. Yep. Uh, I think it's, it's, that's to be seen, that remains to be seen. But it's really about you know uh, continuing to move people forward and yeah. and and come up with more unique experiences. You know, there's there's so many things that we can do from a culture point of view and from a mm. de people development point of view, and you know, creating a completely new generation of creative leaders, design managers, mm. and you know, editors and you know, executive producers. There's so many of those uh, of, of a new generation that, that need to be brought up and, mm -hmm. and helped and supported. So it is really about the people. Absolutely. And, and I mean, speaking of connections, I, I think, you know, Darren and I met virtually yeah. last week. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's well, a little longer than that, so. but we actually first connected last week. Yes. That's right. Um, I mean, but to your point, the connections, the network, I mean, it's so important. And I fully intend on this connection isn't just for to record this. It will absolutely, I hope, continue into the future. Um, before, and I'm looking over my questions here to the right. I'm looking over them. I think they all came up in conversation um, now that I'm looking through it. I do want to make sure though that, yeah, we did. Is there anything in the structure of what you've done in your career so far that, you know, if, if you're sitting in front of someone that's interviewing you, and as we know, this is, you know, not what I want to do here, or what you want to do here on this necessarily. But again, you've been at small companies, startup, large Fortune 100 companies. 
what is a lesson you have learned at one of these places that has stuck with you since you learned it and and become a part of how you function now that's that's a really good question uh, there's a lot from every every experience there's been a lot that i've taken with me to the next step and beyond <clears throat> i think uh there was when i first got to atlanta uh, i was very new to running a, a very large team mm -hmm. uh, so i had just one or two people in, in Pittsburgh and then moved to Atlanta. And all of a sudden I had many, many people yeah. uh, and, and in multiple cities. So I had to quickly learn how to uh, manage multiple people, but also people who were um, very far away. And at the time we didn't have Zoom oh. or anything like that. Yeah. And, you know, so it was, you know, remote managing uh, or managing a remote team in a very different way. Yeah. So having, you know, taking that knowledge to the next, you know, role and, you know, obviously there's so many things you can, you can take from one, one role to the next. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, for, from a startup point of view, you really learn how to interact with teams and departments that, that you normally wouldn't, or if you do from a creative point of view, it isn't necessarily the most, um, you know, it isn't always the, the most positive interaction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, learning all of that makes it a positive interaction and teaches you, yes. you know, when you've got an IT guy yelling at you because you put these fonts on this computer and you shouldn't. <laughs> have, and, and when you've got that, you can easily have a conversation and say, look, I, I really, I need these and here's yeah. why I need them. And I know this causes a problem for you. So how do we, how do we solve this? How do we, you know, bring yes. this together? Yep. You know, that's probably oversimplifying the, the designer IT guy relationship or IT woman relationship, but it's, it's definitely, you know, it, it teaches it, the startup really teaches you the skills to yeah. interact with people. Yeah. You know, working for a multi-global or multi, multi-global, multinational global company like, yep. you know, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola had some amazing people with a, uh, no matter what organization is, there's always politics or there's always, mm -hmm. you know, you know, relationships that, uh, that you have to create from scratch that, yep. you know, someone new coming in or someone who's been there for 40 years, 30 years, and they're so stuck in their way that, you know, they're only going to do it one way and they don't want to hear what you have to say. Sure. You know, you've got to, you've got to figure out how to, to interact and, and work with that person. So, there's just so many different elements from each role yeah. that I think, um, you know, I could probably go on and on with Home Depot, you know, working with, um, you know, IT side by side, because it was, it was primarily, we were focused on homedepot.com. You know, oh, okay. It was at the, the beginning of, of the social push. And so there were a lot of, you know, personalities that were coming into the conversation. And, um, it was amazing what we were learning from each other. Yeah. But having that startup experience gave me the ability to, to sort of see that and let that sink in and gave me the ability to, or the desire to want to learn from those people, yep. as opposed to just saying, ah, I'm going to do it my way and not, not listen. Yep. Absolutely. And that's huge. No matter, I mean, no matter the size of the company, that's huge. Yeah. Um, so before we close a couple of things, one, I want to make sure there's there's nothing lingering in your head that you either were hoping I would hit on or so, just anything you wanted to share before we start closing out. Um, sure. Uh, I think the the big piece is is really sort of understanding uh, my career path has been unique and uh, that. I've enjoyed so many different experiences mm -hmm. that uh, there's no one easy way to sum me up. <laughs> yep. And and I sort of like that. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of people out there that want to be able to sum somebody up in in one statement or one one yeah. line. Yeah. And 
there are so many different uh, layers to people that that's not fair, right? Agreed. So I think for me, it's it's understanding that I've got these diverse experiences and, you know, you know, strategy is a big piece of what I do and marketing is a big piece of what I do. It isn't just, I'm not just a designer. Yeah. Um, not that that wouldn't be amazing if, if that's mm-hmm. where I was in my career, but there's a lot of layers to uh, what I can do for a company and what I can bring to a team yeah. and, and uh, know that my commitment to people is, is probably at uh, the core of everything I do. So mm-hmm. I could really, really drive a team in a very different, different way, uh, yeah. in, a, in a positive way. Awesome. Now I know when I post this, I'm going to post it on <clears throat> YouTube. I'm going to post it on LinkedIn. And when I do that, I'm going to include a link to your um, LinkedIn account and everything yeah. I can with that. But so Darren, what is your, you looked worried for a moment. <laughs> like, where, where, what is your favorite movie? Oh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, I grew up, um, I, this is a long story and I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> it's fine. I don't have a clue <laughs> dad, how long we've been doing this. That's how much I'm enjoying it. So I'm good. I, I, um, my dad was a steel worker and, mm-hmm very proud of what he did and, and worked very hard. And the steel industry obviously still struggles to this day. There was a time when the steel mm-hmm. industry was just, you know, the pinnacle of, of blue collar work. Yeah. Right. And, you know, being from Pittsburgh, it's, it's this, you know, it's in your blood. So, you know, that sounds a little dramatic, but it really is in a lot yeah. of people's blood. And, um, you know, my dad got laid off and, in order for him to provide, he, he went and created a relationship with someone who taught him how to be a projectionist in a movie theater. Really? And there was, there was a union at the time. And I think there still is a union. I'm not sure. Uh, but there was a union at the time and he had to have so many hours in to be in the, 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 the union. And um, he got a job in a theater close to where I grew up. And as I was growing up, he was the manager of this theater. Yeah. And, you know, he got called back to the mill. So he would work during the day at the mill, work at the theater yeah. in the evenings. But I got to see all these fantastic movies growing up. Well, so I, I've got well, so many different I wanna make favorites. Sure, I want to make sure. I think everybody's wondering, did you get to see the movies for free? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. I think so we that, all that wanted a, that. That, <laughs> that was a, that was a perk. That was that was a really it is cool a perk. <laughs> it was a really cool perk. And every once in a while, free popcorn and stuff too. So, um, and sometimes you, you got to see the movies way before they they were. Oh, uh, open I didn't to the think public. about that. So lots of lots of perks way back yeah. then. I don't think you can get away with some of that stuff now. <laughs> but I've just I've had this passion for movies. Yeah. And, and my favorites are always these visual you know, these stunning visual, uh, creations. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I haven't seen a whole lot of movies recently. Yeah. Uh, and I was tired the other night and turned on the TV, hit Netflix and Isle of Dogs came up in my feed. And it was a movie that back in 2018, I really wanted to see, but I never got a chance to see. Uh, it's a Wes Anderson animation and it's stop animation. And it's a fantastic story, beautiful film. Uh, you know, some of the, the promotion, like they've got this VR promotional, you know, film for it. There, there's just, there's a lot of layers to it. Yeah. Fantastic movie. So if you get a chance to see it, I uh, like I said, down. I just saw it for yeah. the first time. Uh, a lot of people are probably saying, oh, that's old. But <laughs> it, it was a great movie and it, it jumped to the top of my list. Next week, there'll probably be something else jump to the top of the list. But yeah, it happens. But for now, yes, that's it. I wrote it down and I'm absolutely going to check it out probably this weekend. So second, because that was first, the movie. Uh-oh. Second, is there a book you're reading right now? Oh, uh, there's a couple that I started. Um, I'm not in the thick of it right now yep. because I've been focused on some other things. 
Um, but the one that I have on my phone, I'm not actually reading it. I'm actually listening to it. <laughs> oh yeah. Audible. Yeah. Yep. Um, culture wins, I think is the name of it. I don't know that. And it's also something from 2018 <laughs> that I probably should have read back then. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it, it's supposed to, you know, it's, it's supposed to really delve into, you know, how to create this amazing culture. Yeah. So, and culture is people, people drive the culture. So absolutely. Hopefully, hopefully it's a good one and I'll get back to you and let you know if it's worth. Yes, uh, of reading course. Absolutely. Or listening to it. So last question. Yeah. What do you want to do when you grow up? Hmm. I don't want to grow up. Fair enough. You never want to grow up. Okay, that's fair. I will say, and I asked, I asked, not that I've done a lot of podcasts, I haven't, but it's a regular question that I ask people um, because usually the answer is not what they're doing, which is interesting. Right. I don't think every, anybody's ever answered like that. So for me, and maybe maybe this might not appeal to some people, but for me, there's an aspect of my life that I just, I want to laugh. Yes. Every chance I get, I want yeah. to, you know, deconstruct the toy and put it back together. And I want to, I want to see that mm -hmm. color with these three colors over here. And if that means I've got to pull out some crayons and, or some markers and shade it out and, and play with it from that aspect. Great. Um, you know, I've, I've, again, I've, I've been lucky. I have never had someone tell me that I've had to grow up. Um, well, that's not true. Mom and dad probably <laughs> did that a long time ago. But I've never had someone, you know, force me to do something that I didn't want to do. You know, not, I, I, I from day one, I was passionate about what I, I do. And, you know, the, the, the laughing and, the exploring and mm. the the curious approach to you know being able to you know, solve a problem. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's interesting because a lot of people, a lot of adults around the table, don't always want to hear th the solution to the problem because they think it's yeah. too silly. Yeah, but sometimes that silly solution gets you to the the most successful solution or the most successful option. Yep. So um, sometimes silly is amazing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, it, it's, I really thrive when, when you can laugh. Yeah. So that laughter is, is a huge piece for me. And, um, you know, if, if I get to the point where I can't laugh or explore mm -hmm. or learn or get excited about something and, you know, jump up and down or, you know, secret deep, secretly do a, a dance, um, behind the, the office door, you know, to show my, how excited I am. Um, I don't think that would be a great day for me. Yeah. So I don't want to grow up. I like it. And now I have to reflect and choose a word for 2021. Yes. So I like, I idea. can't so wait to hear it. I, I need to, I need to do that. So Darren first, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Likewise. And I appreciate the time that you've uh, not not just in this, but Darren Darren has taken the time because this was a new idea, taking the time to talk with me about it, reflect on it, brainstorm about the idea as a whole, and not you know. So a lot of our first conversations weren't weren't even about doing this for him. It was just about the idea itself, which was truly helpful, and I will always appreciate it. So. Hope you enjoyed it. We will put a link to Darren's, however I do it, I'll figure out how, but to Darren's LinkedIn page. And Darren, I wish you the best. We will connect in the future. And Absolutely. thank you very much.